Hey guys, come on in. Good morning guys. Welcome back. Today we're doing a special project. A lot of people have been uh, talking about, you know, I don't have all those fancy tools and I don't have all those fancy equipment and, and I want to build a fort or a cabin. That's what we're going to do today. Today our plan is to build cabin, 25 bucks. That's our budget. Our budget is $25. So we've got uh, the Wooded Beardsman, Chris, my brother here, got him, got him working. He's cutting some poles. We've got our stacks. We're just sorting out inventory because we want to make this relatively quick because we're taking this to a remote location in the back. 40. We're gonna set it up. We're gonna show you exactly how we're gonna do it. Shouldn't take too long. The idea is to try to get this thing up in a day. What we're using today for our build is these, uh, basically dead standing cedar poles. And then you can, you're supposed to thin these guys out long before they get to this point. And you can see there's, they're all just, they're just dead standing sticks. So these are, these are gonna be the construction material that we're gonna use in order to build our $25 cabin. All right, let's gather a couple more and let's get going. How's that for curbside delivery? Yeah, they usually drop it off at the sidewalk and get you to pull it in. Or you got Don. <laughs> Don, like I shouldn't have answered the phone today. Anyways, we, we just trucked that thing, uh, I don't know, about four or five miles. Well, I don't think it was that far. <laughs> it felt like, it felt like that. So we've got our material here. Let's, uh, let's unload and get building. That's my, uh, that's my forte. I don't like moving material. It's like doing the job twice. We've got all our materials here. We're gonna go over them because I said you guys could do this at home. Very few materials. So what I basically have is a uh, little box screws. These are uh, deck screws. They're, I don't know, three and a bit. And, and I have the cedar poles, which you guys watch us bring down here. There's quite a few of them. Again, those are free. And we have, love it or hate it, a bunch of pallet wrap. This is, uh, we've got four rolls of pallet wrap. This is uh, the biggest cost of this build. You can probably find it locally at your, uh, either your A building supply store, or you can probably find it at like uh, Office Depot. Do they still have Office Depot? Places they sell uh, um, home office stuff. It's pallet wrap, saran wrap, plastic wrap, wrappy stuff, shrink wrap. We can heat this thing up and make her tight as a drum. We're just laying out the uh, material here because we uh, basically, we kind of pre-cut everything and we were thinking it's going to all fit together. We just got to make sure, we're just doing inventory of the pieces, make sure the shipper got all the right material here. Nothing's back ordered. Sign of the times, eh? You order something and four pieces show up of the 10 and you're like, eh, what's the use? But, uh, let's get this stuff uh, put together. The basic idea behind this whole cabin is to make it an everyman cabin. Anybody can build one of these. You just need a little bit of money. By a little bit of money, I mean about 25 bucks. It's not that much. You know what? You could you could even fasten this with nails. You don't necessarily need to use screws. So you could you could take some pallets, take them apart, collect some nails. You know what? If you ask the guy at the loading dock pretty or like you know nice enough, he'll probably give you some pallet wrap. Like you don't even you barely need a full roll. How's that for unconventional building material? Was I too close? Pallet wrap. This is the future of building. Or is the past, I don't know. Anyways, let's wrap, we'll wrap our building. In order to clad our end walls, or our triangle pieces, we ended up wrapping the angled piece first and then that gave the actual plastic something to grab onto otherwise it was ended up being sliding up and down and then we kind of went a diagonal fashion in order to make sure the whole area was covered if you can't find pallet wrap the next best thing actually would be if you go to a lumber yard they have the tarps that they wrap wood generally speaking they throw those out they don't actually save them and if you ask the guy at the lumber yard nice enough he probably has a special one saved at the back ask them nicely they'll hook you up Dawn came up with an idea of actually weaving it in and out of the actual wood in order to create structure. Otherwise, it's going to be flapping in the wind. You got the roof, Don? I got the roof. Well, half the roof. Half the roof. There's a roof panel. As you can see, Don's gonna put that up all by himself. Once we have all the sections put together, the A-frame at the front and then the roof panels at the sides, we put it all together 
adding more screws to the structure itself. Being sure to overlap the roof panels in order to create a ridge, a waterproof ridge that is. This is supposed to be a one day build and it, it look it even sounds like we're inside. This is pretty neat. Now, the way this thing works is that there's two layers of plastic, which is ideal because you have an outside layer and an inside layer, and then you have a trapped airspace in the middle, which acts as your insulation. I think this thing's gonna work actually really well with the wood stove that we're gonna put in here. We've got uh, a little bit of engineering to do to ensure that it's not going to melt our building. But uh, as you can see, end of uh, basically a half day. We did half day, we started at noon. We've got pretty much the uh, the majority of the structure up. I think that's a success. We're gonna come back tomorrow and uh, install our wood stove and uh, make this a little bit more comfortable than a, it's, it's quite it's, it's quite nice right now. So I'm gonna chalk that up as a success and we're gonna continue on tomorrow. Chris is just getting the stove. He's getting the stove. It's gonna get hot in here. It looks rusty. It's, well, it's, no, it's, you know, it's not stainless or anything. Oh, okay. It's not an expensive stove. All right, so this is, this is the stove that we're gonna Jerry MacGyver rig inside this, inside, look, you can see here. So we're gonna put that in there. We're gonna make uh, some sort of a gasket type thing that's going to go up inside this area here. Make it through the roof so it doesn't, uh, doesn't melt everything. It'd be really easy to break out if you don't catch it on fire, just run through the wall. Well guys, we're here the next day. The shelter didn't blow away, that's that's good news. I think it's because it's sheltered inside the trees and the wind doesn't get that high in this kind of area. So today the plan is to uh, is to get this thing all buttoned up. So the front, obviously it's the door that uh, that doesn't exist yet. As you can see, it's, it's really bright in here. I don't know how it gets so bright. It's like daylight in here. <laughs> well, it's like daylight, but I think it's like, it's like the softest light you could ever have. It makes everybody beautiful. It does, like a shrink, it, 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 it evens out all my wrinkles. Anyways, so back to the plan. I get sidetracked. <laughs> Is Chris posing back there? Yep, I'm looking beautiful. All right, so Chris looking beautiful. All right, we mean to build the door to keep all our heat in that we don't have yet. You know what, it's actually quite warm in here even without the door. So the plan is to build a door. We're gonna build a frame. I've got some old hinges that I took out of a box. They're gold, old school. Put the door in and that gives us a little bit more enclosed space. We also on track for today is we're gonna install a wood stove in this fire trap. Um, and we're gonna put, yeah, some sort of a bracket up there. I've got a little bit of a plan for that. So yeah, carry on as you can see. Pretty solid. I don't think I would want to climb one. We probably still have to put some uh, ridge plastic on that to kind of shed a little bit more water at the ridge. But yeah, this uh, this thing, if you were to buy it in the store, I, I'd imagine it'd be close to like 1500 bucks or something like that. And I think uh, we're all in for $25 or something right now and a couple of screws and some old hinges. Yeah, let's uh, let's make a door. When you're making a door, especially some sort of a gate or structure similar to that, it's important to put a diagonal cross member. And usually what you do is you go from the bottom to the top. And then that gives you a little bit more structure because it kind of displaces the weight and pushes it at the hinge so your gate doesn't sag. Like with everything else on this build, this is going to be the cladding. This is pallet wrap. So wrap the door. The door is not complete without a handle. I fashioned one out of a stick. Half the battle with getting a good fire going in the winter time is acquiring the proper wood. 
So that's what we're gonna go do now. We're gonna find some wood for our tiny little stove inside our tiny little cabin. Ideally, when you're collecting wood, you want to get a tree that's kind of standing out of the snow. If it's laying on the ground, chances are it's, it's wet. It's not quite ideal firewood. So we're just, we're on ourselves a hunt for some standing dry wood. The drier the wood, the less it smokes. The more heat to get out of it, the better it burns. How about that one there? You push that one over? The top's gonna snap I'm off. I'm the top's gonna snap yeah. off. <laughs> Oh, there it goes. Hey! Oh, hey. Perfect stick. Is that a field goal? You can't see that though. Look at it. Oh, stuck it right in the ground. Stuck it right in the ground. It's all ready to harvest. That's why they call them widow makers right there. It sticks in the top of your head. All right, let's uh, cut that guy up. Trying to figure out the best way to install this stove. This is a, uh, what kind of stove is this, Chris? It is a run-of-the-mill, cheapo hot tent stove. Oh. So it's got no fire brick. It's just basically a tin box with a door. It's got a little baffle here and a little damper at the front, so that's kind of neat. This thing's gonna get crazy hot and radiate crazy amount of heat outside of it because it doesn't have any fire brick. That being said, it's also going to uh, be a challenge to install it because the pipe itself, which is a single wall telescopic pipe, that's kind of cool. It's not telescopic. <laughs> telescopic? No, it's just all put, it's put together like a Russian thing. A Russian thing? Yeah. Like a like a finger trap? No. No, that's a Chinese trap. <laughs> you gotta go the other way. Look at the crayons that build up in that thing. You never clean your pipes? No. Oh. Well, I had it, I had it the opposite way. It's, it's like a telescopic... Now it's poor snow. It's not supposed to stick together. I think it's supposed to, it's supposed to come apart. Yeah. Oh, try try taking the little guy out first. It's always a chore to there you go to figure out how to put this together. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna make a like sort of a uh, piece of flash, and we got some chunks of aluminum, and we're going to fashion them between the the rafter posts here, and then we're going to uh, tape it all up and hope for the best. We're gonna make it so it sheds water, and uh, hopefully it doesn't um, burn the place down. I don't think it's gonna burn the place down. You know what, it might actually it might actually be good for this little tent because it'll actually it'll keep heat in here and it'll actually tighten it all up. Shrink wrap. A lot of the times with these clearances on the single wall pipe is 18 inches. Well, we're not gonna get 18 inches here, but you know what, we could put a piece of aluminum on this on this cross member here and it'll actually it'll deflect the heat. But I do know that creosote leaks out of the seam, so we're gonna put it at the top. So the creosote doesn't leak down. We're aiming for that tree out there. We're gonna tie it with some tie wire to the tree. We're also gonna cut this back once we've got the flashing installed. This is aluminum flashing. And I'm going to install it at the base of the chimney. And then I'm gonna put it on top of the chimney and that allows the rain to shoot over top of it. And I'm gonna tuck tape it in place. This chimney doesn't have a uh, chimney cap, so the tendency of the wind blowing directly into the pipe is gonna smoke my brother out. So I'm putting this little guy here, and I'm gonna wire it around the pipe, and basically it's gonna prevent air from directly blowing inside the pipe, forcing the smoke back into the cabin. I've cut away the plastic here, to keep it away from the pipe, and I kind of don't want to seal this up because I want to actually have airflow through in order for the air to actually travel up through here and kind of cool off the pipe as it goes. This is sheathing tape or tuck tape, brand name I guess, and I'm going to seal the top edge of this here in order to prevent the water from actually traveling down. So we've got our loop, our, our overlap here, so the water cascades off here, off here, and then not inside. We're gonna try the indoor stove. So I've got some coal from the fire. It's already lit, it's half the battle. It's just, uh, let's go with this and that and the other thing. All right. What 
we're just gonna let that uh, catch fire and see see if we smoke most of the smoke stays outside well you guys asked for it so I'm gonna deliver so you guys are wondering where I get my stuff and, and to be honest I just kind of look keep my eyes open for it so there's a, uh, a countertop place and uh, I gave them my, I gave them my, I gave them a ring, and I asked them about their skids in their back, and they were like, "Yeah, sure, grab as many as you want." They look like they're in pretty good shape. They're all looks like hardwood, good burning. So if you if you've got too much of it, you can always burn it at the end. That one's not great because it's got plywood on it. But all these little hardwood skids here, we've got. Uh, yeah, there's a whole pile of them here. Look at all that granite countertop. Look at the chunks. Think what you can make with that. Look at that piece. There's an island piece right there. Future consideration. I'm sure if I asked them for some scrap countertop, they'd be like, "Yeah, grab it." Anyways, we're gonna load up the uh, load up the skids. We got a tarp. We got a tarp. Our tarp cabin to build. As you can see, we've got quite a bit on there. We've uh, stacked them, strapped them down. Make sure it's not a wasted trip. I had to come to town anyway, so I figure if I get uh, I get a bunch of material in the process, that's what it's all about, right? It's about it's about collecting stuff, kind of what you in in order to have it when you need it. Kind of, yeah. What are you doing, One man's there, trash. Young Who's this guy? Do Holy we know who this? Are you? Frickin', I'm the I'm the freaking fuzz man. <laughs> under arrest. You're under arrest. Here. Hey, I I got wow. authorization to grab this. From who? From the guy in in what guy? the guy in the countertop place. Oh. If you guys don't know who this, is, this is Rick. Rick. Rick has a pond that the wooded beardsman has put fish in. Yes. And, yes. Uh, and this is Kevin. This is Kevin from Modern Self Reliance. From Modern Self Reliance, who's uh, yeah scavenge. Mm freaking skids from Steely. Osterwald heating and air conditioning. <laughs> they don't know. They they don't know who you are. They're going to look you up now. They're going to look you up though. All right. He was just checking. Were you thinking? You were thinking I was stealing good stuff. Don't worry. I saw the cameras. Like what the hell's going on here? It's you not scrap metal. Freaking stealing. Next thing you know, there's going to be some liability thing where he hurts himself and he pricks himself in the finger or something stupid. I don't live in that world. Yeah. Well, you're a movie star. We succeeded in building that. $25 but it doesn't quite it just looks like a bunch of tarp so trick this guy out we're gonna add a floor well what's in an actual cabin we're gonna add a floor we're gonna add some benches we're gonna add a sleeping area maybe some electricity we're gonna make it a full functioning cabin so the plan today is to make this a proper shelter right now it's more or less I don't know it's a greenhouse it's a plastic it's a hobo tent so it's just basically a plastic bag in the bush right now but we want to make it a little bit more accommodating for for the everyman. You got the structure, the pallet. It's a great building material when you don't want to pay for anything. So you find these, you know, along the side of the road, behind industrial, you can find them pretty much anywhere. Hardware stores have them. Anybody that really imports stuff has pallets and usually they don't go back to their original place they just kind of toss them or they put them along the side of the road and they're free so you can pick them up and usually all you got to do is denail them and in this case I used a sawzall and cut all the nails so I don't have to pull the nails but that's expensive so you can just pull the nails pound them out use a hammer feels like home this floor is amazing something to lay down in the middle of the bush it's already feeling like a cabin it's actually warmer than the ground so now that we've got our floor all down we're gonna move the cabin back on top of the floor to make sure it fits so hopefully we measure twice and it fits Check that out. That floor is already feeling like a cabin. It's it's nice and solid. It's the finest of all softwood pallets. The uh, zero dollars spent. 
except for those screws I had laying around. But, uh, but yeah, it's solid. You can, that's like a dance floor. I don't know. I think it's fit for a king or a hobbit. Squatter? It's a nice little house. It's all the rage now. Like barn board, pallet wood, skid wood. The people in the big cities, they put these as accent walls. And I'm using it as a floor. That's insane. Hmm, let's have some lunch. So, uh, yeah. Mmm, grill sent us a, a grill. And uh, I should always read the instructions before I light a fire. So I lit the fire and then I looked at the grill and it said pound steaks in before lighting fire. So we're going to do that now. We've only got a little fire going. This is a... Uh, this looks like a pretty neat grill. It's the idea is to pound these two little steaks in beside your fire or light a fire underneath your grill. You probably should pound them in first before you light your fire. But that being said, we're gonna do that after. We got kind of a half fire going. We won't light ourselves on fire. Let's, uh, let's pound those steaks in and uh, get this thing set up. So while we wait for our fire to turn to coals, we're gonna, we're gonna put our stove back in to uh, kind of orient the whole inside to make sure it fits because you don't want the stove too close to the bed and you don't want the bed too close to the side and whatever. So we're gonna put the stove back in, we're gonna put the chimney back up and that kind of gives us a better idea on where everything fits. It looks like our fire is almost ready to cook. So uh, yeah, first first experience with this thing. This thing, this thing's built solid. It's built to last, like it's solid. It looks like solid stainless steel. It's got some weight to it. It seems really easy to use. You can go up and down on your, on your, uh, on your guy here. So you just set your height. You just set it down to whatever height you got where your coals are. They also sent me, they also sent me these really cool mugs. I don't know if that's, uh, that's, that's normal or if that's the standard operating procedure. Who doesn't like a good hot dog, especially cooked on an open fire? It adds, it adds something. Hundred percent Canadian mustard seed on an American grill. You see that? Here, I'll let you grab your own wiener. I don't want to touch your wiener. <laughs> That's mustard. Oh, oh yeah. The oh, bun's a little cold. I should have warmed the bun up. I think it tastes better when it's on a grill outside. Next up, we're working on the bed. So now we've got this uh, this bed we're going to be working on and it's made out of uh, slats. So the, again, the, the pallet slats, and because uh, we don't have anything that's quite long enough because we're using reclaimed material, we're gonna splice together some of the two by threes, and then we're gonna add some two by threes to the edge, and then we're gonna, we're making it 80 inches long. And then we're gonna put some feet on it. And that's gonna give us a nice platform to lay down. That's the plan anyway. Oh, look at that, it's solid as a rock. I don't think that's a good quality in a bed, but the bed doesn't break. Oh, doing a lot of laying down on this job. Gotta test your stuff. I just need a mattress or something. A foam pad or... Maybe some leaves. Bunch up some leaves on this bad boy. <sighs> Posturepedic's got nothing on me. This is a hot tent stove and it uh, formerly belonged to my brother. It still kind of belongs to my brother. He just kind of lent it for this project. So it's got, uh, it's basically a tin box. It's got no fire brick in it. So it's nice and light. It's designed to be portable. Like I said, it's designed to be in a little hot tent. So it's got, uh, it's got all the features of a, a standard, you know, wood stove. It's got the little damper here and it's got the chimney pipe. Uh, the only thing is, is it's heavy or it's light and it's got no fire brick. So, but it should heat up this little guy pretty good. Um, if we get this thing sealed up anyway, so that's, and it's got the little side burner so you can actually cook on it. It's a, uh, it's a neat little stove. It's, it's seen some, it's seen some, it's seen some stuff. Look at that rusty thing. Anyway, we've got a little hole at the back here. Um, it's because we didn't use a dimensional lumber when we built this thing. So we've got, uh, we've got to kind of adapt and, and modify and, and work with what we have. So we've cut another tree log there and, uh, we'll just slide that in place and that'll, uh, That'll fix the uh, the hole. You gotta look at Don. Delivery. Don, d d special delivery pole. So Don's gonna put the pole in. There's the pole. We've filled the gap. That's pretty good, actually. Fits like a glove, Don. Did you measure that thing? Yep, I did. <laughs> Perfect. 
You know, we can stuff some leaves and stuff underneath that if, if, if for, you know, moss. We'll throw some moss under there to make it airtight. Because this little stove is somewhat more of a permanent installation, I decided to install what is like a little hearth, which is a piece of plate steel underneath it. So when you open the door, the ashes, if any, are there and they fall down. They'll just sit on that little tray until you realize that they just fell down and put them out before you set the, or the floor on fire. That shouldn't happen. Anyways, when you're focused and paying attention to what's going on, you'll be aware that there's coals that fell out of your stove and landed on the floor. So that's to prevent that if it does, to, it was to occur. We do, uh, we do have a uh, carbon monoxide smoke detector when we stay, when we plan on staying here overnight. You always kind of want to have that whenever you're, you know, have any kind of fire going in your, in your structure. Don is out there grabbing some kindling. We're gonna light the uh, tiny little stove in the uh, in the tarp shelter, in the cabin, in our little cabin made out of saran wrap, pallet wrap. Yeah, so we're gonna light that guy up. Gives us a little bit more comfortable working environment. Is that even gonna fit in the stove? <laughs> I'm not sure. I haven't even looked. He's seat. never looked in the stove. So, anyways, Don likes making fires. So he's gonna light that guy up. Good thing you have a hearth on the front. <laughs> I sent Don on a wild goose chase through the forest to pick me up some uh, sticks because I'm planning on building a lamp because we need a lamp in our cabin. So let's, uh, he went to the other side of the world. You can see how, how nice it is out here. You guys, you guys get the good view. It's like a, it's like a, you know, Norman Rockwell painting out here. It's got the, yeah, it's a perfect spot out here. It's got some sticks. He's got a whole pile of it. He's probably looking to burn stuff. Let's make a big fire. Okay, so now that we have a bed, what other furniture do we need? We probably need a little table, maybe an end table. Like, say so you can put your alarm clock. Ha, <laughs> you don't need an alarm clock in a cabin. What do you put on your end table in a cabin? Your gun? Yeah. Yeah, because if a bear sneaks up on you, it's coming through the wall. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, we're gonna build a table. Uh, I'm not building a, a bench. Table, let's build a little table. Yeah. All right, let's build a table. We got our tabletop. This is an old spool of uh, wire. You find these guys out back usually by the skids. This is uh, this is this used to have the round part sticking out with another thing, so it's the wheel. So it's disconnected, and uh, we're gonna make a table out of it. So that what we did there. We cut we cut our legs. We're gonna attach our legs to the bottom. We're gonna only use three because a three-legged table is a lot more stable than a four-legged table. Although we might put four legs on it. We'll see how three work. We'll go from there. Turns out four legs are better than three. I ended up flipping it back over and adding a fourth leg. And now it's very stable. Put weight on every corner of the table, even though it's a circle. Solid. All right, nice place to sit. It's actually a nice place because you're right beside the stove. So like a little bench right here would be perfect. A coffee table. I bet you the pioneers, when they were traveling, you know, discovering new lands, I think the, I bet you the first thing they built when they settled was a chair. Just to sit down. There's something about sitting down after trudging through the snow or through the rain or even like on a nice sunny day. It's a good time to just sit down. Make a chair out of a tree stump, a log, a pile of rocks. Chair's where it's at, sitting. So next up on the agenda, we're gonna build some coat hooks. And uh, my plan is to use this board as my basically backdrop on the coat hooks. And then I'm gonna take little branches and I'm gonna stick them to the stick. Stick them to this branch. Branch. We're taking the branches and we're sticking them to this board. And that'll give us a nice rustic looking coat hook rack. So, there's my stick. Back. 
Let's go back inside where it's warm. Take a look at that. You can hang up everything you own on that thing. It's getting warm enough in here we can take our jackets off. You know what the other good thing about this table is? The center hole. Like I didn't even think about this, but you can grab the table by the hole. Grab the table by the hole and you can move it. Look at that. It's like a table fit for a feast. Where's my lunch? Bag of chips. What do you got? I got toasted bagel. A toasted Ooh. bag? Well, you can toast it again. Uh, I could have that, could not you? You could. It might be frozen. It was sitting out in the bag. What do we got for temp? We got three degrees in here right now. It's actually, it's actually, it's comfortable. It's comfortable working temp, three degrees. Oh. Got a banana, because, you know. <laughs> Monkeys. Oh, bottle of water, but they don't, we shouldn't talk. We're in a plastic tent, we can talk about bottled water. It's not that bad. It's a fact of life. And a sandwich, which is also in a plastic container. We're surrounded by plastic. Another, I bought, bought Don a bottle of water. Thank you. Still need some lighting, so we're gonna do uh, we're gonna deal with lighting this afternoon, and um, maybe a lamp, some overall lighting, and then a lamp. Cause you know what? I've got like a billion pot lights in my house, and I sit there with my lamp. I don't know what it is. Something about a lamp. It's cozy. So I know a lot of you guys might be thinking, why does Dawn choose to come out and help me build weird things in the bush? Let's ask him. Why, why do you come out, Don? What, what's your motivation? So it's fun, it's something to do, it's interesting. Yeah. All of the above. All of the above, so <laughs> something, you get out of your house, you do something, you get into nature, you're crafty, creative. Yeah, you get to spend some time outside, so it's. Yeah, but we're always inside. <laughs> we start that's right, yeah. we start off outside and then we we no, end that, up that's not really true i mean today but we're inside we're in and out yeah so. so okay so it's about being in and out of, of the house that's right yeah yeah well i've always got something going on right it's good to have it's good to have people that do stuff right So we've got our lampshade built, and this is the uh, this is going to go over top of the the light. And this is what I have for the lighting is an old uh, oh, I think it's IKEA or something that's got the little rocker switch on it. I'm just going to hook it up to this guy, put a mounting bracket inside the lamp in order to uh, in order to hold it. And then probably some more screws just to give it a little bit more support. All right, so we got our light bulb in, got our lamp in, and what we brought along is our energy battery pack. And this is our this is our line voltage, AC voltage, that's going to uh, power this thing. So what's neat about this thing is that it's it's got a lot of power. I don't exactly know how much power is in there, like 1500 watts or something like that. And uh, it's got USB ports on, it so you can charge your phone. And uh, it's got AC DC. It's got 220. Anyways, it's good. So they can just turn it on. We're at 100%, so plug it in like a traditional lamp. Look at that! Bing! You got a little switch. You can't tell because it's so bright in here, but if it was dark, you would welcome that lamp. Not much change to the outside, but I want to take you on a little tour of the inside because that's, the, that's where all the action happened today. Let's see what we got in here. Take a look at this. Should close the door. Don't want to let all the heat out. We've got uh, got our uh, little little bench slash end table. We've got our bed right here. We've got our uh, side table with our battery pack down below. It's our energy 
Apex battery pack and that allows us to uh, have off-grid power. You can hook that thing up to solar. Yeah, or you can charge it at home, AC, or you can use 12 volt DC. You can use on your car. Our little lamp we built, rack, and we've got our, we're drying some gloves. It's just so it's, a, it's a either dual purpose. You can hang your clothes up there, you can dry your gloves. So our little camp stove. This is, uh, I guess it's a tent stove. It's basically hitting our tent right now. Coffee table, dinner table, end table, coaster. We've got all the, all the amenities here. We even got our, protecting our, uh, underneath our floor. So that's good there. And uh, like I said, we've got a chandelier and this is, this is for future consideration. So this guy here, you can actually, uh, like if you find deer sheds in the woods, which are the antlers that fall off during the, I guess every spring or is it in the fall? Anyways, you can put deer sheds on here. You've seen those really fancy chandeliers that uh, have the, uh, the deer antlers or the elk antlers all intertwined. So that's that's future consideration. So you can build on it. Temperature in here, it's it's a it's a very comfortable 8.8 .8 degrees right now Celsius. Outside it's about minus four or so. So it does it does retain heat. It's got enough air. It seems to be coming in. So it's nice and fresh. It's not drafty at all. This thing is, uh, this is a viable solution to, to, you know, building a quick shelter in the woods. And again, material on this thing, we use reclaimed pallet wood and pallet wrap. You know what I mean? Like you could basically find this, you know, at the back of an industrial area. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this one. I, uh, join me on the next one.